So if you look to the left right now, you're going to see me going through my website. And this is my website for my web development business. And I've managed to get perfect web vitals on just about every page on the site. There's only one page I've messed up on. And I'll explain why that is later. But what I'm going to do here today is I'm going to walk you through everything that you need to do to get perfect web vitals for your website so that you can do the same. And this will help you rank higher on Google as well as convert at a higher rate. So let's jump over to the site and let's get started. Okay, so I did a lighthouse report for about the four main pages of my site. My site's pretty small. There's not a whole lot going on here. It's really just a landing page, a blog, a place where I show my videos, and an inquiry form in the contact us right here. Um, if you see here though, you'll notice that all of these pages have perfect lighthouse scores. And that's what we're going to walk through today. We're going to go over how to do it. And what we're first going to start with is performance. So for that, we need to jump over to the Next.js project in VS Code. So I'm going to jump over there, and that's where we'll continue. Okay, so let's first talk about performance. In order to have a very fast site that performs well, you need to really do two things. You need to make sure that your server is responding quickly, and you're not shipping too much JavaScript to the client. Let's first talk about server response times. So I'm going to go to my blog page and I'm using a Sanity headless CMS on the back end for my blog. I just found that the easiest when I set this up. So I'm not using the fetch API that's built into the um, newest version of Next or since Next 13 I should say with the app router. I'm using um, React Cache as well as Revalidation. So this essentially, if you're coming from the pages router, this is the same as using get static props and giving it a revalidation value of 30. That just, that just means that all my content will be static. So it means that if somebody requests it, the server basically already has it ready to go and it can send it right to whoever's looking for the content. So in short, we want to make sure that you're statically generating as much content as humanly possible. Because when you're doing things server-side rendered, yeah, that's it still is often pretty quick. However, if you have a lot of if you have a lot of JavaScript that's being processed on every request, it can end up taking a long time to respond. So that's the first thing. Let's make as much content static as possible. Next, what we're going to talk about is we're going to discuss dynamic imports. So let me just remember where I have this. Yep, it's in this file. Okay, so if you see what I'm doing here, I for my inquiries on my website, I am putting them in a Firestore document. I know you might be thinking right now, this is a bit of a weird setup using a sanity cms and not just using it for inquiries yeah it's because i've i've had it this way for a while and i just didn't want to change it i had it like that on my old site so what we're doing here is we are dynamically importing the database i'm not going to show that file because i don't want to have to regenerate keys for my um firebase but you can if you look here it's in this file right there you can if you've ever used Firebase before, you know what I'm talking about, as well as these, as well as add doc and collection from Firebase Firestore. So when we dynamically import these, what we're going to do, I'm going to quickly go down here and I'm just clear and I'm going to run npm run build. Okay, perfect. So if we scroll up here, let's find, this is in the contact us route. You'll see that my route is 123 kilobytes in gzip size. That's pretty good. But what if, if you notice up at the top here, I, for the sake of this video, left these comments and I'm going to not dynamically import these when I submit the inquiry, right when I need it. So that means that when we, when we 
get to the page, it's also importing all of this JavaScript. So that will mean that our bundle size will be bigger. So let's take a look at that. Let's run npm run build again and see what we get. Okay, so now if we go up here, yeah, look at contact us. Now it's in the red. So it went from 123 kilobytes to 185 kilobytes. And by importing these right at the top here, we have no performance, there's no benefit to doing so. It might make the increase submit a little bit faster, but that's about it. So it is very clear that we should be dynamically importing these packages in my submit inquiry function that is triggered when the user submits an inquiry on my site. The next thing we should talk about is the built-in image component. This replaces the need for the IMG tag with the Next.js and what this will do is this will optimize your image often converting it to AVIF or WebP so that the user of your site gets an optimized version for their device it also removes the chance of cumulative layout shift when the image loads in. What I'm sure you've seen on a lot of sites can be pretty annoying and obviously hurts your performance web vitals. It also lazy loads images by default. So images that are way down your page or way past the fold aren't going to be included in the initial load time of your page, what is just massively beneficial. If you want to take it even further, you can use a image compressor like this before you put the file in your in your public directory within your Next.js project. That will cut off a few more kilobytes and make the image load just a little bit quicker. You might also want to consider using the Next.js bundle analyzer. What this will do is this is one. This is these are the client packages and. These are all the bundles that will be shipped to the client at one point or another using my site so that you can analyze what are the biggest things and what you might want to get rid of in order to increase your speed. You also should take a look at the Next.js script component. This is something I'm using, but I don't really want to show the scripts. So, what, But what it allows you to do is it allows you to lazy load your scripts if you want as well as using other different other loading strategies such as after interactive or even using a web worker like party town what's pretty cool next what we should talk about is accessibility and area fields area i might not even be saying that right but that's how i say it, it stands for accessible rich internet applications and it just means that people with disabilities using a screen reader or something like that can access your site well. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that you have proper roles defined for your buttons, things of that nature. And I would say honestly, probably the most important one is that your images have alt attributes. This is something that um, Lighthouse will scream at you over if you don't have it. You also need to make sure you have a title element that's similar to what we will see with SEO. We need to make sure that Lists only contain LI elements and other script supported elements, um, things like that. You can go through this. This is pretty easy to Google and figure out though. Unlike getting rid of JavaScript, which can be a bit of a pain, this is pretty simple. You should be able to figure this out. I just wanna go over the basics in this video. So in order to get a perfect best practices score, you're most likely going to have to go through all of your pages and you're going to have to figure out what is wrong with each one. So you're going to have to run a lighthouse report for each. However, what is good is if you're using a serverless environment, things like HTTPS are handled for you. And if you're using Next.js 14 especially, you're probably hosting it on Vercel so you can take advantage of server actions. Um, but the other things that I would say are really important are no browser errors logged to the console. First, it's just a security concern if people can see your errors, as well as it just makes you look amateur. If you have a bunch of things popping up in your console, not a good look. So what I would say to do here is run this on your site, go through it, Google 
ans Google, not answers, but solutions to whatever problem you might have. And you should get there pretty quick. It shouldn't be that bad. Lastly, to get a perfect SEO score, you're going to have to go through all these things. However, it's also, this one's probably the most simple one of them all. Firstly, you need to make sure you have a title, but was similar to accessibility. You need to also have a meta description. Because if you don't have a meta description, it, there's not much to see under your title on a Google listing, and they will penalize you for that. You also must make sure that your page returns like a 200 code. You're not returning a 403, something like that. Um, links must also be crawlable. So you need to make sure that you're in your robots text, you're not blocking any of the links that you want to be seen. Like for example, on my site, if I go to slash robots.txt, you will see that I have, it just lists my sitemaps and you will see that I disallow the admin route. That's, that's the only thing that I want disallowed on my site. So, um, you also need to, again, similar to accessibility, image elements must have an alt attribute. So if, if as, as we're going through this, you're probably noticing that a lot of these are repeats. A lot of these you're already going to have sorted out by the time you get to the end. So really, you need to just take some time, go through all of these. It should only take you a few hours if your site's not that big. And you should be able to get a perfect Web Vital score if you can manage to handle the performance score. That's definitely going to be the hardest part. But luckily for you, I have a full series about it. Link in the description that you can check out. I did say at the beginning that there was something I couldn't get perfect. You notice I didn't show this page. And even though we're lazy loading everything that's needed for Firebase in order to create this, this Calendly, as beautiful as it is, it is, it is just brutal for your web vitals. And this just ends up destroying it. However, the thing is, is for this page, I'm not too, too worried about it because if somebody's on the contact us page. I already most likely have them at a stage where they want to reach out to me. So I'm not too, too worried about it. But let me know what you think. That's all for this video and I'll see you in the next one.